session is hopefully a little bit more um, practical in terms of just helping us think through um, how we can look after our own well-being and um, during this session I'm going to be throwing out some questions um, but there will be time to actually reflect on them when I finish speaking and um, in the chat um, you should hopefully see that there's some questions there for reflection so you don't need to worry about scribbling them all down they are all written there and um, they're just there for an aid when we're reflecting as well they were just a few questions that I um, thought might be helpful but there might be other things that you want to reflect on as well and that's that's cool. But just to um, give you a little bit of an introduction, I do know lots of you, which is which is great. Um, I'm a minister at Arap Baptist Church and have been there for um, seven years. Um, and then in the last two months, I've taken this new role on um, with the association as Renew Wellbeing Advocate. Um, so I've been doing that for about two months now, which um, is great. And obviously this is something that I'm very passionate about. Um, I have sat um, where you have sat, where you're sitting now and heard lots of people talk about well-being and how we need to look after ourselves. And um, I know it is a lot easier said than done because um, often ministry, the throes of it just can overtake us. Um, but I have really been learning myself about the importance of, of well, that flourishing that um, Corinne was talking about and, and the fact that it isn't actually just for us. I mean, it's important for our well-being, but actually it does help with our missional and kingdom work too. So I just want to share a little bit about um, my involvement with Renew Wellbeing um, as someone who is still in pastoral ministry as well. So hopefully um, some of the, the lessons that I've been learning might be helpful in your ministries too. And particularly to focus on five healthy and helpful habits that are really easy to tailor and adopt to your own well-being. Um, it's always helpful to have a sort of a model to, to work towards. So I'm just going to share my screen quickly. So we're looking at five healthy habits built around prayer, which will hopefully aid with our inner well-being. Um, and you can see them there. They give keep learning, be active, connect and take notice. And we'll come back to those um, in just a moment. I think we'd all agree that at this time in particular, um, thinking about um, you know, navigating our way around the new restrictions we've got with Christmas on the horizon, not knowing um, quite what that Christmas period is gonna look like. We, we do as ministers have additional stresses on us at our time, at this time. And so it is really important to um, think about our well-being. Skip through that for a second. So just to, just to give you a little bit of background, when I first um, met Ruth, um, my my own well-being really wasn't on top form. Um, my dad had recently passed away um, after a very sudden and unexpected cancer diagnosis. We had um, literally fourteen weeks from finding out he had bowel cancer to him passing away. And they were very difficult weeks um, as we tried to obviously come to terms with, with things, um, not knowing actually how long he had. Um, we also had some very precious moments in that time. But actually the day I was supposed to meet Ruth for the first time was the day that my dad died. And so my co-pastor Gethin had to take the meeting for me. But when I did eventually then meet Ruth a few months later, I was still grieving, um, still um, struggling with lots of things personally, um, trying to look after my mom and my family. We'd um, always been very close, but uh, my dad's death really tore through the heart of the family. Um, obviously we all do grieve differently, but for some reason, um, we all seem to be pushing each other's buttons and um, just the situation was quite messy. And so everyone started retreating and grieving in their own way, which was understandable, but really hard when you're used to all being there for one another. Anyway, Meeting Ruth was therefore a breath of fresh air because I was at a point where I really felt I had nothing left to give. It was very hard to minister when I was empty, as she was describing earlier. But she showed me this model of well-being that wasn't onerous or hard. And it was something that I suddenly found and thought, actually, I can do that. I can turn up. I can be present. I can pray alongside people with these prayer rhythms because there's words here. I don't have to find the words for myself. There, there's words, there's structure that, that can help. I can journey with others in this safe space where it's okay not to be okay. And so I hope you might find some of these, 
things and lessons um, that I can pass on to you helpful too. And what I'm sharing are things that Ruth has been working on and put together over the last five years. Um, and um, then she graciously just passes them on because um, she believes that everyone um, has gifts and skills that we can all learn from one another. And so she likes everything to be co-produced and, and um, for everyone to be able to add um, their own stamp to like the prayer rhythms or um, the other patterns that we follow. But the rhythms um, that, that we have um, are, are based on those five ways to well-being that I mentioned earlier. In, in 2008, there was a really significant piece of research that was undertaken around people's well-being. And um, these were five things that people identified and said they'd found that um, they'd found had positively impacted on their well-being. And they were the connecting, learning, keeping active, taking, taking notice and giving. Now, I remember them by thinking about um, a clanging gone. Um, Corinne earlier was talking about love and if you remember in that passage um, in Corinthians 13 where it talks about if we don't have love we're like a clang and gone well we don't want to be um, um, a clang we don't want to clang so we want to do these things instead so you've got connect learn and then be active we just go for the a active take notice n, and then give you've got clang we want to do those things instead and one of the reasons I think these are really helpful is the fact that actually they're really versatile, they're really interchangeable, and they can be applied in our lives in so many different ways that they don't become over um, prescriptive. Um, and there's lots of ways that we can, they can manifest in our lives. So in terms of connection, um, thinking about how we connect with God, how we connect with others, with the world around us. And as we've become more and more aware recently, there are just so many different ways to connect. Face-to-face, um, -face, obviously, online, we've been doing a lot of things on Zoom or maybe YouTube, um, even snail mail, writing a letter or text. There's lots of ways that we can connect with one another. Learning, there's things for us to learn about ourselves, about God. We can learn a new skill, a new language, a new hobby. We can research something, maybe a family tree or a historical event. Being active, um, we can be active by exercising, by doing something energetic, or even actively doing nothing, um, actively choosing to rest, to potter in the garden or to go for a walk. Um, when it comes to take no taking notice, well, we can take time to consider how we're feeling. Um, take time to observe nature, being aware of what maybe God is saying to us or being aware of the things that can cause us anxiety or stress. Being present in the moment is, is a really important part of maintaining well-being. And then, of course, giving. There's, again, so many different ways we can give. We can give of ourselves, of our time, our talents. We can give thanks. We can give up things. We can give away things. Um, we can give over control. And because there is so much overlapping uh, of those things, you may find that in doing an activity, you may also be learning something new or in taking notice, you may find yourself connecting more with God. So um, the, there is no um, hard and fast line with these. It's just that these five things have been identified as really aiding in our well-being. And all these things, I think we can agree, are great. And it's, it's good to have these things in our lives but we may notice that they do give the impression that it's all about doing things, connecting, learning, being active, taking notice, giving. And arguably for our well-being, we also need to find patterns um, that help our inner well-being. After all, it is called well-being. And as disciples, I think we're also called to be as well as to do. So I wonder what our list of those things might look like now. Well connecting with God it might just look like seeking to be in his presence being in his word being present with God and others being attentive and companionable journeying alongside others in terms of learning we may think about learning the art of being at peace with ourselves of being and resting in that shalom that we talked about earlier and living in the fullness of God's um, life that he gives to us we might even seek to learn from Jesus' example how to rest and recharge and make sure we're at our top um, in order to be able to minister at our best. And then we've got being active. Well, that can be being active in our faith, particularly in our prayer life, in seeking new opportunities to grow closer to God. Taking notice, being more aware of what God is doing and how he is at work in and around us, 
listening to what he is saying, taking notice of our spiritual temperature and giving in terms of being able to maybe give up control of things and being able to hand over um, the things that we find difficult to God and being able to give thanks, being able to share our journey with others. Of course, the way that one person um, connects or stays active or takes notice is going to be different from one person to the next. But the key to well-being is finding ways to incorporate these things in our lives um, in the best way they are for us. And the model that Ruth developed for new well-being takes these five things and turns them into prayer habits. And um, I just want to quickly explore with us um, some of the things and reasons that we have the prayer habits we do in Renew um, in the hope that they, they may be of help to you. So in terms of connecting with God and with others, Ruth's already shared with us this morning about the cup prayer, the way she uses her first morning coffee to connect with God, to think about being filled by God, ready for the day ahead. And um, I think the key thing from this is, that's a really helpful habit to have, but it's finding a habit that um, is helpful for you. For me, actually just opening up the curtains and spending a moment looking out the window, especially at the moment, um, having the clocks gone back, I've seen some really beautiful sunrises and morning skies. And actually, even when it's grey outside, I can be thankful for my warm house um, and the fact that I have shelter. So for me, just taking that moment just to welcome the new day and to connect with God through that is something that I have found helpful. So you'll have your own habits, but it's worth thinking about what one habit could you use to start each day that just reminds you to connect with God, just to slow that pace down. And as Ruth said earlier, just to remind ourselves that there is a God and it's not us. Just taking that moment to deliberately connect with him so that our day begins well. And obviously our relationships with others are also key. Um, and we know that connecting with others at this time has been very odd. Um, a lot of it, like today, has been over Zoom or the telephone or Skype. Um, but I don't know about you, for me, it just doesn't, um, it doesn't make up for face-to-face -face time. I've really been missing my family. And so it's important that we make sure we are able to find ways to connect with others in a way that does feel satisfactory. And um, that may mean taking a bit of time out to spend time with family at those moments when you can, um, but not feeling guilty about that, just knowing that actually that blesses them and it blesses our well-being too. And that's why we really encourage people to share some of their habits and renew, to, to do things with others as well. And praying together, even as simply as we did this morning, can really help people to feel connected to one another. And I know um, even in this time when we haven't been able to meet physically in the ARC where we hold our Renew Cafe, people have really appreciated the fact that we've, we've gone on Zoom and um, just had those prayer times and then left the chat open so people could talk or do their hobby, um, just knowing there were other people there. But those prayer times has really helped people to feel connected, even though we haven't been able to meet up. Um, and it can be really encouraging sometimes when, um, you know, maybe we're having a low day just to hear someone else speak out a name or a characteristic of God. It can just really help ground us and remind us who God is amidst all that we've got going on. So something else that you might like to think about is who are the people that offer positivity and peace or restoration in your life? And how are you planning times with those who offer this? knowing that Christmas just might not be the same. For me, Christmas is usually a time where I see lots of family and lots of friends. And, um, you know, the, the fact that it might not look like that this year um, is just something that I need to um, be aware of, knowing that that, you know, has the potential to really affect my well-being. In terms of learning, um, as I shared with you earlier, we've been working through um, the Psalms in a new well-being. Um, we've got to Psalm 149, so next week we will have made it through to right to the end. Um, but we use those meditation phrases not just to empty our minds um, when we're meditating, but to meditate on God's character and on his word. 
And I think that's one of the distinctions um, that Corin was talking about earlier. Um, meditation sometimes does have this um, negative connotation. But actually, we, we, when we meditate on God's character and on his word, we are filling our minds with those good and positive thoughts um, and re just reminding ourselves who our foundation is grounded on. And the Psalms are really great for helping us to learn about God's faithfulness all through the ages, learning how the psalmist experienced life, um, the ups, the downs, things that we can relate to and um, that might help us to hold things in tension, particularly when we're having more difficult times. And of course, our learning isn't just limited to the Psalms. There is so much that can be learnt about God, about how to live well, how to be all that God intended us to be. And our learning can lead to reflection. I wonder, what are you asking God to teach you at the moment? What do you want to learn from him? Maybe you've had time during this lockdown to, to learn things about yourself as well. Um, and how might you use some of that learning to improve your well-being? Asking God to help you work at some of those areas that maybe you found really difficult. Um, for me, those two questions have been linked. Um, I now um, regularly go on, on, on walks because I've found that I find being active really easy, but being still, not so. So I've been trying to learn how to carve out those times to get away and pray like Jesus did and not feel guilty in taking that time out, but actually recognizing that I actually work smarter and more efficiently when I've done that. Um, I tend to have more clarity after taking that walk, even if, it's, even if it's only 20 minutes. And I'm definitely a lot less stressed because it helps me to hand over control of my diary and my time and, and what's going on. Um, it's been important for me just to have that time out and in the walk it has helped me to, to connect with God through creation. Um, I think it's helped me to take more notice because um, you know there, there is some beautiful things out there. I was really blessed um, several times um, in this recent lockdown seeing a couple of kingfishers which apparently have lived on the canal forever but I've only just realised and, and seen them because I was taking more notice but there's real blessing in that as well and obviously going for a walk um, makes you um, active as well which is positive. Which leads us on to the next, um, the next of the five, being active. And in Renew Wellbeing, by punctuating our day with prayer, it's one of the ways that we really get active practicing the presence of God. It's about being active in prayer so that it's not just a buoyancy aid, but the pursuit of our hearts and a firm foundation from which to activate other areas of faith and service. And sometimes, although it may seem contradictory, it actually gives us that permission that we need to slow down and cease other activity for a while. So in Renew, we have lunchtime prayers, midday prayers. And at this time, we would use the Lord's Prayer. And um, a bit like we did this morning with the psalm, we just pray through line by line. And there's space for people just to add their own short prayers, just a word or a phrase so that everybody feels that they can get active in prayer. And this is one of the things that I found to be really beneficial in terms of my well-being, because it just provides that pause moment in the day, a moment to check in with how things have gone so far, to stop the day just running away with me. And I've found some of these prayer times have been when I have greatest ha had the greatest sense of well-being, as in that stillness, I can remind myself in this moment, I am OK. And I actively remember that whatever is coming next, God will be in that too. And we've had a number of prayer times in the ark um, during our Renew Wellbeing cafes, where at the end, people just haven't wanted to move. There's just been such a sense of calm and peace and um, tranquility um, that's been really tangible. And people have just sort of sat there, people not saying anything, but just really resting in, in that peacefulness. And um, we found that that has actually been attractive to other people as well. As we've said, um, we offer the prayer to those in our Renew Wellbeing cafes as, a, as an option. You know, we, we do it. And if people want to join in, then they're very welcome to. And we've seen people who originally um, didn't want to join in with the prayers um, have then sent something and wanted to join in. Um, even if they don't pray out loud, they will just come and sit in that space because they find it to be relaxing and um, peaceful. 
So I think there is there is also then an active missional element in these prayer times too. Um, so if, like me, you're not always good at putting yourself first um, or your well-being first, um, you can always tell yourself you're doing it for others because they will reap the benefits, but you will too. So what two habits of inner well-being might you have a go at? Um, what new opportunities does this Advent season, a season of preparation, offer you in activating your prayer life? Taking notice then, um, in the evening we use the prayer of examine. Um, it's an ancient prayer, you may well be familiar with it, but we use this to help us really take notice of what is what God is doing and saying as we rewind the day and reflect on the good and hard parts of, of what's happened in that day. Um, experience can be a really great teacher if we take notice and hand these experiences back to God, asking him to teach us through them. And in the prayer, it asks two questions. Um, firstly, in what ways have I seen God's love and beauty today? And then secondly, in what ways did I not see God's love and beauty today? And it really encourages us to take notice of how we've responded to those things. And particularly when it comes to the things where we didn't see God's love and beauty, it encourages us to take notice as to whether we are picking up other people's baggage and carrying it um, unnecessarily. And if that is the case, to lay it back down again. Um, and if it's things that, that we did that somehow weren't loving or hid some of God's beauty, then just to ask for God's um, forgiveness and then leave those things behind knowing that we, we find forgiveness um, and his mercies are new every day. And it also helps us to take notice of how we are doing I know if I start to see an increase in things I've said or done or the way that I've reacted that haven't been so great, it's usually a, a really clear sign to me that I've let my well-being slip. And I usually find I'm either more tired or stressed or irritable. Um, so it gives me an indication that I need to do something about it. And for me, the times when I know my well-being is at its best is that sense when you like the number of the songs say recently, that sense of knowing it is well with my soul and when you take these times to pray add these prayer rhythms in you just grow to know those those feelings more often I found um, and as I say do something about it if you know that you're lacking that at this time so you might like to think about for yourself how are you right, right now and how do you know when your well-being has slipped too far down the priority list are there times that you can set aside to reflect um, or pray um, in whatever way that you find helpful? What might that look like for you? What might God be saying to you at this time? And finally, in terms of giving, we don't have a prayer rhythm as such in terms of giving, but we nurture the habit of giving these prayer rhythms away, of blessing others with them so that they can join in with prayer times, whether that is on, on their own, but knowing other people might be praying at the same time, or by joining in with the set prayer times that we have. So we have daily morning prayers online that anyone is welcome to attend. And on a Wednesday lunchtime, um, we gather for midday prayers. Um, again, any, anyone is welcome to join in with that. And I have a number of pe prayer packs that um, I can send to anyone who would be interested, which have the details of all these prayers in. If you'd find them helpful, you can just get in touch with me and I'll put one of those in the post for you. There are so many ways that we can give, but time can be one of the most precious gives. And that's why we run the Renew Wellbeing Cafes, providing these safe places where it's okay not to be okay. And we really do give thanks to God for what he's doing through these cafes and the prayer rhythms in renewing people's well-being and it's about sharing and giving what we're giving away what we're learning the five ways to well-being they provide a common language um, in which to engage um, with people beyond our church communities which is great because um, there's that commonality in them but through uh, adding the prayer rhythms around them we have the opportunity to give habits and patterns and prayers that also encourage our inner well-being and by sharing those prayers with others we hope that we also give them a glimpse of our God. The greatest commandment as we all know is to love the Lord our God with all our heart, mind, strength and soul. 
in other words, with all our well-being and to love our neighbour as ourselves. And I've always thought about that really in terms of um, treating my neighbour as um, in the way that I would like to be treated. But actually in this context, I think it's about loving ourselves so that we can love our neighbours better. So the final thing I think we can give is the gift of good well-being to ourselves. And that includes giving over, surrendering anything that is negatively impacting our well-being, giving those things over to God. Because when we do that, not only do we benefit, but we can better love God and others. And when we do that, we're less likely to make a clang and more of a happy chime. So finally, the last questions, um, what stresses and tensions might you need to give over to God and just rest in his presence and purposes at this time? And what habits or hobbies could you give away to encourage others? That's a little bit of a, a whistle top um, uh, tour of, of the prayer rhythms um, in Renew. Um, but um, I do want to just give you some time to, to think about those things for yourself. So if you haven't already, you can download the, those questions as I, um, that I mentioned as we were going through. And I think 15 minutes, Mark and Mark, have we got um, just for people just to, to think about things for yourself and um, what might help you um, aid your well-being.